Progressive presents Adjusting to the Suburbs. You just bought a home in the suburbs, but no one told you about all the birds, specifically this one, who seems to be calling out Roy. Roy. But who exactly is Roy? And why doesn't he ever respond? Maybe Roy is just bird speak for save with Progressive by bundling your home and auto. I guess until Roy answers, we'll never know. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company coverage provided in service by affiliates and third-party insurers. Chunkies. I'm Carter. Doge. And Jordan. Before we dive in to Spring Delirium, a couple of quick notes that I thought were interesting out there in the news. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World cast to reunite for a Netflix anime series. Yeah. That's right. All of them. All of them are coming back to voice an anime series. I'm definitely in for that. I'm sure it's a yes for you boys. Still Edgar Wright, yeah? Still. It's everyone. That's so fun. This is you awesome. know, we we did Nice Guys. Uh, we reviewed that not too long ago, and it's one of those projects that it feels like everyone attached was just down. It feels like everyone's just ready. Yeah. If someone says yep. jump, they're like, "Yeah, let's absolutely do it." Another little bit of news: I never watched the X Files. Did y'all watch the X Files? Mm-mm. A a bit, an episode here and there. It was a semi phenomenon, I think, culturally when it first yeah, came for out. Sure. I was, I was a little too young, I think, when it came out for, for me to be into it. But the X-Files uh, is uh, getting a reboot. And it's going to be mm-hmm. developed and created by Ryan Coogler. So yep. when you get familiar names together, it's often, it's often worth a check. So mm-hmm. we'll look into that. Yeah, that'll be cool. Uh, before we look into that, because uh, that's probably not even in pre-production. So that would be years from now. So I'm not going to hold off on this until then. I'd like for us to do Spring Delirium. Wait, before we do that, we haven't... What about it? Can we talk about... Uh, well, I'll bring it up. The most exciting bit of movie news for me over the last week or so is the Asteroid City trailer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It looks for, yes. incredible. Mm-hmm. We are reaching reaching levels of Wes that I didn't even think were possible. At this yeah. point, it just trailer. sort of seems like... It's like a phase six Marvel movie. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> like it just seems like everybody's Wes, here? Wes says jump and people say, okay. Already did. Now what? Now what? Please. I would love to be yeah. there. Yeah. It looks amazing. This is the first time a handful of these. First Tom Hanks, Wes Anderson collab. Steve yeah. Carell, Brian Cranston. I think this is the first Scarlet collab with Wes. Yep. You know what's funny is she made so much sense to me. I think at first I had assumed oh, she already was sure. there. Yeah. That she already was a part of it. But yeah, I think it's it looks that's awesome. gonna be awesome. Yeah. First Maya Hawk. Maya Hawk's in this. And yeah, she's also just, perfect for Wes Anderson. Yes, she is. I, I just think that the cast looks pretty stacked and um the trailer is just dripping in Wes Anderson. Uh um, yeah. like not just visually, even I told Callie that the scene where the old the old lady is talking over I say old lady that's probably rude where the woman is talking over Scarlett Johansson as they're discussing her movie character and they're just sort of talking over each other the whole time it's the most Wes Anderson dialogue you yeah, could have ever put absolutely in yeah. a trailer and I I just love it I just feel like it's so fun for his you know there's some people like we said Denis Villeneuve loves to have uh, Jake Gyllenhaal mm-hmm. or you know someone's just got their muse but Wes has like a pack. Mm-hmm. He's got like a yeah. dozen, and it must just be fun for that crew to get back together and do another Wes Anderson film. He must be fun yeah. to work for. I think somebody in our Discord brought up that he must run a pretty, a pretty, like tight but cool set because Jason Schwartzman just keeps coming back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, he's totally. I, I like Jason Schwartzman. I'm a big fan. Me too. 
Yeah, I think it's tough not to. He's not doing yeah. anything that's too risky. He's aggressively right. likable. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, um, he's the postman in Klaus for crying po- po- out loud. Klaus is postman. <laughs> Which Klaus uh, doesn't even technically count in this bracket. Klaus came up on our Discord. But let me tell you about Spring Delirium this year. This has been the hardest. I spent hours and hours putting this list together because it can be offensive if you don't hear your champion in the ring. We've got 64 cartoon characters. Let me lay down before we start diving into Spring Delirium for the next few weeks. Uh, essentially the parameters of making this list. It was 2D, first of all. That was most important. Back in the time of Disney Dozen, that is a nostalgia in terms of Pixar's around, you know, VeggieTales are, are around, but technically those Thank are three-dimensional. Goodness. So we stuck with 2D because the list would just be too big if we could bring yeah. in everybody. Plus also, we've already done those. Also, we're eliminating anime and we are eliminating uh, Studio Ghibli because that there will be another time for that. Yes. Okay, so yes. those of you that might be bummed not to see Totoro, don't don't even worry about that. Okay, I totally get it. We also, if there was big IP elsewhere that maybe it's not best known for its animated iteration, like maybe Batman, and I know that's probably the most controversial because a lot of people's favorite thing about Batman is Batman the animated series. But if we just included that crew. There could be six spots taken uh, yeah. in this bracket. I saw a lot of lists. Uh, really, I collected these names from several lists online from reputable sources and then just fan-sourced sources uh, and then just kind of looked at overall cultural influence and then put this list together. So all that to say, let us know in those Instagram DMs or if you're in our Discord, maybe someone you were upset didn't make it. And then I want you to think about if they would beat the Mutant Ninja Turtles or Bugs Bunny. Okay, so we'll go through the bracket. I've had these boys look at this over the last 48 hours. They've selected their first round winners. And again, we're going to go through it today. Today's one of the biggest days that we'll have because we've got 32 matchups. A few of these we'll be able to fly through, but there were nine of the 32 that these two were on separate sides. And so I've given them a bit of time to come in here and, and state their piece, why they feel like this person should move on or this character should move on into our round of 32, which we will go through next week as a podcast. And then when we get down to the 16, that's when it goes to you. So it will be up to you on our Instagram account to go in and vote all the way to the champion of Spring Delirium Forgotten. I I was thinking about, so we did Spring Delirium the very first year that I was on Two Chunks. So this means this is our fifth Spring Delirium? Yeah, I think so. So wow. I've amassed yeah. Have we something done it every like year? Wow. 300 mm-hmm. champions to come into the ring. So we've done it every year. We, Our first matchup here. It may have been here. a year we didn't do it. Are we starting the with the left we, conference? Left conference. Known yeah. as the left conference. <clears throat> we have, uh, it was Bugs Bunny, number one seed, Bugs Bunny. Very popular. Uh, here, here's a perfect example. 2D. I've heard of him. Heard of him. Not Disney. Bugs Bunny against Curious George. No curiosity here. That's a Bugs sweep, Bunny moves on. Bugs Bunny yeah. moves on to the round of 32. But immediately I, I got now, respect for you, Curious, but... Yeah, sorry, Curious. Well, maybe sorry, learn something. Maybe stop wondering about become stuff. Learned, learn it's something. Funny. Become learned, George. The way... <laughs> the learned George. When the I surveyed that, the learned George. The learned George. The way that I created this list was I was... I just did a big grab you know, cast a wide net and had, you know, 80 names or whatever, then started to split them mm-hmm. up. Curious George was in the educators bracket. <laughs> I was just putting them in okay. different rows. It was like Cartoon Network. <laughs> Some of them were the production companies. And then it was like educators. And it was sure. just the little teaching shows. Uh, the next round, we've got our eight against our nine seed, Cora of Avatar The Last Airbender. And no, her own show. Huh? Just, just Legend of Cora. I don't think she's in The Last Airbender. Oh, my bad. Legend of Cora. Cora. And uh, Luis Belcher from Bob's Burgers. We're on separate sides here. Yes. We are. Doge said Cora. Jordan said, Luis, talk to me about this. Where are we at? Who wants to go first? I'll go first. I said Cora because I already had a Belcher representative make it through to the next round, and Uh, I wanted to keep things interesting. I didn't want it to be oops all Belchers. Okay. Um, yeah, I picked 
Louise Belcher because A, I haven't seen The Legend of Korra, although I'm okay with her moving on because I know that she's a beloved character. So I understand. I think I think it I think some public opinion has to play in here because that's what makes a cartoon a legend. Um so yeah. I, I totally understand if Korra moves on, but uh man, I got her no cartoon problem. is literally, literally a legend. It's true. I got no problem with two Belchers moving on and Louise is fantastic. What a great character uh, in, in what I would call a, at the beginning at least, surprisingly fantastic show. Um, yeah. Yeah. Now sort of an established fantastic show. And I know that these are two great characters from two fantastic shows going head to head, but Louise Belcher, the Bob's Burgers in general just pulls off something that is so difficult, which is uh, an adult cartoon that isn't gross. Yeah, that's yeah. so funny. And, and I really respect yeah. that. So that that's why Louise got my vote. And then I guess it comes down to me. As a sure this I won't really be changing my vote. Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess y'all aren't going to do anything about it. You did everything about it, and now it's up to me. Um, I'm going to say... It does feel like... Because it's like two chunks is in control of this at the first round. Yeah. And then it's the people. Yeah. And I'm looking up this there. Is the, this is the caucus, basically, where nobody yeah. gets to really have a say in anything. Nobody's yeah, I'm looking up there, and whoever wins this goes against bugs. So yeah. it's not like there's going to be too much of devastating. I'm not trying to assume what the next right. round will be. But I'm going to I'm gonna go uh, with Luis. I'm going to go with our, lung, our youngest Belcher. Yeah. Moves yeah. on. You know what? That tracks. Big, that feels like something you do to me. Tough matchup. Very tough matchup. Next matchup was Daffy Duck out there in that Looney Tunes world against Bojack Horseman. Funny matchup. A lot of these matchups made me giggle because they essentially became random after I seated everybody. Uh, yeah. The winner here was Daffy. So Bye, Daffy Bo. moves Sorry, on. Bojack. In terms of the, I had also a section that was just classic cartoons. It's kind of tough to go up against a Looney Tunie. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Here early. Yeah. Now, here's an interesting one. We had Bart Simpson, the number four seed, against Lion-O, the number 13 seed. Lion-O of Thundercats, yeah. which everything about Thundercats is the most metal thing yeah. in yeah. the world. Bart Simpson and don't have that sort of omens, unfortunately. He don't got those sort of is omens. Demonstrably less cool than Lion-O. Oh, it's not even Lion-O cool. moves on. Lion-O pound Lion-O. for pound might be the coolest character on this bracket. Yeah. Lionel moves on to the round of 32. Then we have our sixth seed, Zuko. This is of Avatar Last Airbender. Yes. Against number 11, Bartok. I have to be honest here. This was Anastasia. I wanted to make sure that this didn't completely negate all of the cartoon characters that would show up in our list for voted on forgotten movies. Yeah. And so I was like, let's just put Anastasia in there. Watched it last night and said, guys, how do you think about Bartok going here? That feels way more our flavor. And that even came up on Discord of, of um, some uh, under-the-radar characters that people really like a lot. And I get it. So Zuko against Bartok. We were split here. Jordan with Zuko. Doge with Bartok. Explain yourselves. Yep. Yeah, I'll go first. Hank Azaria. I'll go first since Doge went first. Oh, I've already gone. Oh, I've already gone. Oh, I've already gone. Hank Azaria is your only answer for Bartok? So far. Fair enough. Um, yeah, man. I haven't finished Avatar The Last Airbender. That's just my own that my own mistake. That's not for any reason that reflects negatively on Avatar The Last Airbender. Um, what I've watched of it, I really adore. I think that Zuko is a really, really, really fascinating and deep character for a mm-hmm. kid's cartoon that aired on Nickelodeon in the early 2000s. Uh, and it, to a point that it's like impressive that he exists. And, uh, yeah, but Bartok just doesn't have enough screen time to carry the weight to take down Prince Zuko to me. Oh, don't worry. He's got his whole own entire movie. He does have his own. Bartok the Magnificent. He can be magnificent. I'm going to tell uh, you that's... not in the next round. That's not great for me. The full Bartok movie is not going to work for me. So, I think <laughs> is, so he, Bartok doesn't make it to the next round, Carter? Bartok does not. Zuko makes it so to the next round. So you hate Hank Azaria? For Carter. us, it is Nobody because I hate. So Azaria. Carter, so Carter, it's, you hate Hank Azaria? No, he's the answer. voice of Lionel, and Lionel moved on. 
So Carter, you hate the things I vote for? I'm going to no. answer right now. If if this was Agador Spartacus and he was a cartoon. Yeah, for real. Okay. Move him on <laughs> he he would have gotten my vote too. That's fair. You got to worry yeah. about that. You ain't got to worry about that. But vote. Zuko moves on. Our next round, another, <laughs> this was another surprise. do 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 baby. Welcome to the delirium. Yep. Finn and Jake of Adventure Time, which is a very popular show. They were a three seed. Loses to the 14th seed. That's right. Inspector Gadget. Go, go, Gadget. It just happens Upset, like baby. that sometimes. Go it just happens like that sometimes. <laughs> that song is such a bop. It's <laughs> it really is. Incredible bop. <laughs> yeah, very, very good. Uh, we've got two more matchups in the left side of the bracket. The left, We call it the left top bracket. Uh, it was Betty Boop, number seven, Betty Boop against number 10, Albert and the Chipmunks. The Chipmunks. Yep. Move on. Put your initial on your round. shirt, Betty. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no initial. If there was a B, we might be talking. It would be the next a round story. We had our number two seed, one of the highest seeds in the entire bracket, Charlie Brown, one Charles Brown against She Ra. I haven't watched She Ra, but She Ra was a character Nobody that has. kept coming up on all of these lists. Uh, in terms of popular cartoon characters, because I don't know if y'all know much about Shira, but essentially it was a play on He Man, except they made it incredibly diverse. It's like one of the most diverse of that age uh, mm. in terms of like LGBTQ representation. So it's it's really cool. high on a lot of people's lists of being very different for cartoons. Doesn't get past Charlie. Uh, Charlie moves on to the next round. We go down to the lower left side. Honestly, of the Charlie won one. based on soundtrack alone for me. If I'm being yeah. Yeah. real with you, yeah, it's tough. And he's got movies too. You know, he's got his little show, and he's also got his movies. Number one seed here: Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles against number sixteen seed Phineas and Ferb. Now that's TMNT just bad luck. luck. No, that's just bad contest. luck for Phineas and Ferb. They would have won several of these matchups for me had they not been events. Abenst? Yeah. Had they not been abenst the turds? Been, been, been but it's been. the turtles. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough too. Have we talked? Turtles. Have we actually talked on the podcast about the new Ninja Turtles movie? I don't and know. How awesome looks that amazing. looks. I'm so excited. I, about by that. the way, I, I don't know if we've ever talked about the turtles very much at all. I was a turtle head as a kid, like a mm, big Ninja surprised. Turtle fan. That definitely a feels turtle power. Favorite. I love it. We had number eight Garfield against number nine. Porky Pig in our next matchup. Garfield moves on. Do you think he just yep. ate him? Yeah. Yeah. You think he just ate him in a gulp, big one big gulp. I do. Probably not a Monday, Monday, lasagna. Yeah. Was that hard for you, Doge? I don't feel like you're a Garfield fan. Are you a Garfield have you been fan? Reading my me- have you been reading my messages? I thought it was irony. I couldn't tell. I guess you can't tell over messages. He's probably my favorite fictional character. Okay, next round. I, he's, I a like cat. he's a the, cat. Cats usually don't like lasagna, but he does. The cartoon Garfield, <laughs> um, like, not not the comic strip, but like the little TV show from when we were kids, probably even before yeah. we were kids. I, I would assume it was probably reruns. Uh, it's really fun. Really, really yeah. fun. I loved that show. Yeah. Yeah. Number five seed, Tina Belcher against number 12 seed, Pinky and the Brain. This was another unfortunate one. I do love Pinky and the yeah. Brain. But Tina is a lot of it's people's to go favorite Tina. character. From this, this, uh, this boy's favorite character. Bob's Burker. Perhaps one of the, the most famous gifs right now. One of the most used in my messaging of her just getting after it, just dancing. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The Belcher sisters move on to the next round. Yeah. That's The awesome. Belcher sisters. That's really cool. We've got a few matchups up here, though, that we were on different sides. Beginning with this one, number four, Popeye against number 13, Archer. Number four, Popeye against number 13, Archer. Jordan said Archer. Doge said Popeye. Explain yourself. No, all of a sudden he's afraid to go. Popeye is nothing. Popeye is an old cartoon that's not even worth watching anymore because it's so boring. And um, I think it was great for the day, but now it, Popeye is the vegetables in a jello mold of cartoons. None of us would eat it now, but we can appreciate that. I guess our grandparents were cool <laughs> with it for some reason. And Archer is really, really funny and groundbreaking. And also H. John Benjamin, who is fantastic. That cast is nuts. How does it uh, do break that ground? HJB. Do what? Sorry, say that one more time. How is it groundbreaking? How is it groundbreaking? The animation style and the humor for a cartoon like that are pretty outrageous. 
Um, I think that I think that the humor is super quick, like almost Arrested Development style speed for a cartoon, which to me is pretty impressive. Um, yeah. And then to span as many like seasons and changes to format and story as they did and still remain pretty consistently funny. It's impressive. Yeah. Plus Popeye Those? sucks. Like you couldn't, you could not watch a full Popeye episode right now. You couldn't do it. <laughs> before, before Popeye premiered uh, in 1947, Americans did not eat spinach. The largest purchaser of spinach was restaurants and they used it to, uh, to kind of as a garnish to decorate food. cannot be your argument. I like it. And since so. Popeye prepared, spinach became prepared. a staple in many Americans' diets. <laughs> since it prepared. Since it premiered, it, spinach became a staple in many Americans' diets and millions of Americans and people across the world are now strong to the finish because they eat <laughs> their spinach. I, it sounds like an errant uh, stormtrooper shot. Prepared. Prepared. Uh, none of that's true. None of that's true, by the way. I made that up. Yeah. But no way. Popeye that's should brilliant. win. Just for that, Archer moves on. <laughs> <laughs> Archer goes to the next round. <laughs> Sorry, Pops. I would. Sorry. I would. Now, if I it would, was real life characters, if it was Robin Williams as Popeye, it also wouldn't move on. Mm. <laughs> it also wouldn't move on. Here shows. Here now shows the age of this podcast. The age of these hosts. We had number six seed Beavis and Butthead against number eleven Animaniacs. The Animaniacs move on. If the yep. if Beavis and Butthead had a song about all the countries of the world, then maybe we could have a conversation. But they might, they might. Number three Bobby Hill against number fourteen Ed Ed and Eddie. These are both very close to my heart. When I saw this matchup, I was I knew I was hoping it wouldn't be split. Here's here's because the thing. This is really hard. I'll make this easy. I'm actually willing to see Ed and Eddie. Here. I'm okay. willing to hey, see. Oh, me edit. too. I ain't got a dog in the fight. I've never watched a single frame of either of these programs. No. Oh, you way. just picked randomly. Doge, you need yep. to watch King of the Hill, Carter. Good. Well, let's let's put this. I think you'd love it. Let's put this right here. Then between me and you, Carter, since we've both seen at yeah. least some of this, I've seen pretty much all of Ed and Eddie and only a couple episodes of King of the Hill. Here's where I'm at. Oh. Mike Judge. That's why Ed and Eddie got my vote, just because I've seen far more of it. But Mike Judge and what he did with King of the Hill is so unique. It's amazing. The, the way that he threaded like the sort of yes. like the sort of like gentle redneck culture of suburban Texas in a way that is like respectful and funny, but also yes. highlights like that people it's not making fun of redneck people. It's not making fun of country people in suburban Everybody Texas. Loves it. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so I, I just think that Bobby Hill deserves to go through more than Ed, Ed and Eddie. I was expecting a, an too. argument here, and yeah. I've uh, seen all I've seen all of both of these shows, um, and yeah, there's a specific scene to where Hank is having a hard time because Bobby doesn't want to play football; he wants to play soccer, and soccer is not even American, and he's pretty upset about that. And at one point, Bobby says, Dad, why must you hate what you don't understand? <laughs> and that's something that we would say all the time in my house growing up of someone who was just <laughs> unsure about something. And it's just because they were ignorant to it and didn't know anything about it. And it's like, why must you hate what you don't understand? So Bobby Hill is going to move on. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. He just Pops is going to show up in another side of the bracket. But Bobby, Bobby should, should move on there. Our next matchup, the Iron Giant, Vin Diesel, makes his way into another yep. bracket. Against number 10, Dora the Explorer. We could not have had two different Sorry. body types. <laughs> That's two true. more different body types. The Iron Giant. And I said Iron. I don't know if you saw that. The Iron, Iron yeah. Giant. Iron, Iron Giant. Giant. I'm, I'm already, already having to like emotionally prepare for when we watch this movie. Iron Giant. I'm not ready. I watched it. It was a one-off for me. It's one of the first that I watched Dora that. I was like, I'm not doing this. Fox and the Hound, Iron Dose, Giant. You haven't seen it, have you? Like, Never again. I have not seen the oh, Iron Giant. Oh my goodness. It's Spielberg. Wow. I probably won't watch it. Okay. Cool. Next matchup. And then we'll go to an ad break. Number two seed, Scooby Doo, also known as Ruby Roo, against number 15 seed, Strong Bad of Homestar Runner. We were on two sides yeah. here <laughs> Doge with Scoob, Jordan with Strong Bad. Yeah. I would love to hear your argument for Strong Bad beating. Scooby Doo. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough that he's up against Scooby of all people. That's that's pretty difficult. But um, honestly, here here's where I'm at. 
This is the one vote really on this side of the bracket that I like, no pun intended, had a dog in the fight. I just think on pretty much all my votes, I tried to remain pretty like, yes, let's factor in personal preference, but also let's factor in public opinion. Let's factor in overall impact on entertainment and all those things. Homestar Runner defined so much of my sense of humor, even as an adult. Strong Bad being arguably the number two character on the website. Homestarrunner.com was such this weird... It'll never happen again. Something like Homestar Runner no. will never no, happen not. again. Neither will Scooby-Doo, to be fair. But nothing, nothing like Homestar Runner will ever happen again. This weird, self-contained, built-out world with games... Like feature merch. length films, <laughs> merch, little mini episodes of like five different variety. There's like five different shows contained within Homestar Runner. And Strong Bad is this weird <laughs> luchador, macho, completely hilarious wild. anomaly. And I just think that he might be the single most unique character on this entire list. And I want him to have a shot at the finals. I want to watch his Cinderella story where he literally boxes his way through this. I just think that Strong Bad, I understand that Scooby-Doo is Scooby-Doo. I get what's happening here. Sure, yeah. But for me, head to head, am I spending 20 minutes watching Scooby-Doo or 20 minutes watching Strong Bad emails? It's Strong Bad emails. I don't even have to think about it. So I think Strong Bad is like the like the church basketball team that somehow made it to March Madness. <laughs> where you're just like, whoa, you're here? Good job. You're not going to win anything, but wow, you made it. Because I think it's very, very hard to argue that Strong Bad is like better or more influential or whatever the, the qualifier is than Scooby-Doo. I agree. Than really anyone on this but, list. I don't think Strong Bad, like personal preference, yes, but I don't think dude, it's just I don't a personal know. I preference I think Strong list. Bad beats several people on this list. I think that if he's not matched up against in, Scooby-Doo. In the, in the court of general opinion, in the court of public opinion, you think Strong Bad beats anyone on this list? Well, yes. Some some people, yes, but I, who? I, dude, I think that Strong Bad beats, for, for people our age, I think Strong Bad's beating Garfield. I think Strong Bad is beating... Um, probably Peppa Pig. Peppa Pig, like Dora. Is the it Explorer, people? Is I think. Yeah, I guess that's the question. Every single year is how are we measuring this? Because I I typically do fight to the death, and I didn't do fight to the death this year. Strong Bad would obviously kill Scooby Doo. Well, the last time but, you did fight to the death, and I didn't. All of your people lost because we weren't doing fight to the death. Only you were doing fight to the death. <laughs> And this time, all my people lost because Carter just picks the people you voted for. It's because so I I'm have excited to see taste here. What? I'm excited to see Strong Bad advance to the next round over Scooby Doo. No, th- let's not get personal here, Doge. I I think that. Can you go to Walmart and buy a folder with Strong Bad on it? No, <laughs> because you can with <laughs> well, Scooby Doo. Well, at a time you could have. But here's, no. here's what's going on through my head. I love chaos. The chaos of Strong Bad winning this game. I have to say, though, is measured against the backlash of Scooby Not. Scooby, Scooby should. On. And that's one of the Scooby hardest does. things I've had to say in any Spring Delirium. I'm pretty devastated but Scoob, about that. Scoob has to move on to the next round. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Let's go to an ad break. Has ha, Wait, hang on. Before we go to ads, has Strong oh. Bad ever had a movie where he goes to hell? Because Scooby has. Do you know what the worst part about this whole thing is? I know that if we weren't mm. doing this bracket, Doe's just picking Strong Bad. I don't think I am. I really don't think I, I am. I don't agree. I think I'm a Scooby I think you're head. blinded. I think you're blinded by the bracket right now. No way. A talking dog who solves mysteries about monsters. That is incredibly unique. Strong bad dude. On to and he's ads. got a nephew and he's got a nephew named Scrappy. Dude. Let's let's go. How do they even how do they even you bring up like think of and that and stuff? Jordan will beat you on that one. He's got a brother named Strong Sad. He's got Strong Sad <laughs> and Strong Mad and the cheese. That's true. And the cheat. On to ads. Progressive presents Adjusting to the Suburbs. You just bought a home in the suburbs, but no one told you about all the birds, specifically this one, who seems to be calling out Roy. Roy. But who exactly is Roy? 
And why doesn't he ever respond? Maybe Roy is just bird speak for save with Progressive by bundling your home and auto. I guess until Roy answers, we'll never know. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company coverage provided in service by affiliates and third-party insurers. Welcome to BreezeLine, where you'll say, ta-ta, T-Mobile, because we have 99.9% network reliability, and they don't. That's right. Time, weather, or even streaming in a basement won't affect our superior service. That's because we have real internet, backed by our fiber-powered network. And T-Mobile? Well, they just have a 5G cellular network. So for a limited time, find your perfect speed with prices starting at $19.99 a month for 24 months. Terms and conditions apply. Go to BreezeLine.com to learn more. The top right side of our bracket, and I know this doesn't mean much on a podcast medium here, on an on a audio medium. Just imagine up and to the right. These boys could not be, it's, it's, it's good timing because we've had a few disagreements. It makes for a good show, but I want them to stay friends. This top right hand of the bracket was a sweep. They agreed on everything. Our first matchup was SpongeBob, a number one seed yeah. against Helga Pateki. Yeah. Pataki, yeah. sorry. I love Hey Arnold very much. This That's, was the uh, most selfish one that I did was just to get a character from Hey Arnold in here. Yeah. No, she deserves to Chris be Chris Hemsworth's wife, right? Huh? Yeah. It's Chris Hemsworth's wife? Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah, Helga Pataki. SpongeBob wins that round. And I got to tell you, the number eight seed in this next matchup is probably the hottest thing in the world right now. Yeah. Everybody's talking about this. And it, the the win here is is pretty impressive, even though it was a lower seed. But... Number eight, Bluey, was against number nine, Squidward. And Bluey wins here. It was unanimous. I've watched I, enough it, it Bluey with my nephew three. to know that it's, Bluey is it's pretty fantastic. Amazing. Pretty fantastic yeah. show. We'll have quite a matchup here, SpongeBob against Bluey in the next round. That's going to be <laughs> tough. Uh, our next uh, winner here, we had number five, Hank Hill, against number 12, Chucky Finster. Chucky makes it to Gotta the next round. Gotta have the Gratz represented. Gotta have a Rugrat. Gotta have a Rugrat. Then we've got our next matchup, number four, Eric Cartman of South Park against number 13, Papa Smurf. This would have been the one thing, if I could see it live, if it was an actual fight to the death, (laughs) this would have been the one I wanted to watch. Papa Smurf against Cartman. Here's the thing. Let me talk about this matchup. Go ahead. Just for a second. I I would say that I'm not, I've seen quite a bit of South Park. I'm not a massive South Park fan, but I respect South Park so much. That's why Eric gets my vote. Also, the other reason Eric gets my vote is that the Smurfs couldn't be more of a snooze fest for me conceptually. Yeah. I couldn't uh, care less snooze. about the Smurfs if I tried. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cartman moves on, which that's a funny matchup too because they're basically the same age, I think. Chucky against Cartman. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, they're not. Cartman's a bit older, a <laughs> little bit older, but they're both kids and represent. Cartman is very- probably the most famous The most famous baby in media. Very, very, very differently. Our next matchup, we only had one member of the SpongeBob crew make it onto the next round because number six, Patrick Starr, was beaten by the number 11 seed, Miss Frizzle. I'm not surprised by this. I won't apologize. I think think this was a hot underdog pick uh, nationwide is that that Miss Frizzle would move on and congrats to her. Number three, Snoopy, goes against number 14, Steven Universe. Steven Universe is a great show by the way, but it's not Snoopy. Snoopy moves on. Then we had Felix it's the mostly Cat. Mostly because he's to, a veteran. Because I had to put Felix in here. He was a number seven seed, but Felix the Cat was like one of the first cartoons. Uh, up against number 10, the Pink Panther. Pink Panther moves on to the next yeah. round. Yeah. yeah. Then we have number two, Homer Simpson, against number 15, Space Ghost. Did y'all ever watch Space Ghost? Yeah. His talk mm-hmm. show? Yeah. Space mm-hmm. Ghost, Coast to Coast? I didn't know if they were... Too young for that. I watched it. Homer uh, moves on. In though. secret. Homer moves on. I, watched, I used to watch Space Ghost Coast to Coast in secret with my finger resting on the last channel button on the remote so that it could flip back to Disney <laughs> if my parents walked in. That's an amazing sensation that I have shared. Homer Simpson moves on to the next round. And this is uh, our most controversial round here. I'm stoked for this last one. It's, a, it's our most uh, two-sided here. Uh, I'm going right. to knock out first just the matchups that were unanimous, and then we're going to go yeah. four straight yeah, against cool. each other. Another absolutely bonkers underdog win here. We have a winning 16 seed. Did any <laughs> other 16 seed win? No, not even close. We had number one, Rick and Morty, against number 16, 
Samurai Jack. Yeah. Samurai Jack moves on. Rick and Morty doesn't even make it past the first round. So Hold many on, brackets let's, busted. <laughs> let's stop down for just a second here. I got a couple things to say about this matchup. I'll start by only talking about Rick and Morty, then I'll talk about Samurai Jack. Number one, for me personally, and I to please don't be offended if you love Rick and Morty. I think Rick and Morty's the single most overrated animated show of the last decade. Ooh. I've only seen a handful of episodes, and I think it's fine. Number two, <laughs> Justin Roiland is a piece of dirt, and uh, I think the vote should reflect that. And unfortunately, yeah. I think Samurai Jack is unbelievably cool. Samurai right. Jack is super cool. It is <laughs> awesome. It was kind of like Americans were like, okay, so it hadn't really hit the States yet, but there's this anime thing that's going down. You ever watched <laughs> Toonami? so sick. Now, we dude. can't yeah. do that. We don't have any of those animators, but... Yeah, Samurai Jack is so cool. Unbelievably cool. Samurai Jack moves on. Please. Uh, our other matchups that were unanimous here with these two. Number six, Rocky and Bullwinkle against number 11, Dexter. Of Get Dexter's out of my lab. laboratory, Dexter moves baby. on. Dexter moves on. Way to go, Dex. I love that show. Number seven, Woody good. Woodpecker against number 10, Mordecai and Rigby. Mordecai and Rigby move on yeah. in this sense. Regular show is really funny. Did you did you ever um, <clears throat> did you ever go on like Cartoon Network.com and play the games that were there, like the sh the, the mm -hmm. show based games? They had a Dexter's Lab game that was like using mirrors to solve puzzles that like bounced yeah. light around the room or like a laser beam around the room. And I would play that right now if it still existed. Yeah, so fun, DD. Number 10, oh, sorry, number two, Tom and Jerry against 15, Clifford the Big Red Dog. Yeah. Sorry, Clifford. Sorry, we had cats funny. and dogs and Be mice, funny, so I guess. Hey, go on. Clifford, Tom and Jerry Clifford has never randomly yelled round. like a full grown man. Yeah. <laughs> every time, y'all ever watched a compilation of every time Tom is like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's so freaking fun. It kills me every time. Our next matchup in real life would be absolute carnage. It's number eight, Taz, the Tasmanian Devil. Yep. Against number nine, Yogi Bear. Jordan was with Taz. Yep. Doge with Yogi. Explain yourselves. Taz Start is Doge. nothing. Taz, Taz is nothing. Taz is absolutely nothing at all. He's a tornado. He's nothing. Yogi Bear lives in Jellystone, likes picnics, and Boo Boo might be his son. We don't know. <laughs> Taz is nothing. Taz is uh, way more fun. Plays on the Toon Squad. Um, that's that's all I got. I mean, I like Yogi Bear too, but Taz is Taz, dude. Plays on the Toon Squad. I'm gonna say Yogi moves on. Good Yogi Bear moves I, I on to the next. I round. understand why you did that, Carter. Yogi. Next matchup, number five. <laughs> Uncle Iroh. Did I say it right? Yeah. Oh, my God. <sighs> I was happy to make it past that. Against number 12, Peppa Pig. Can I start? Can I start? Can I start? Yeah. <laughs> Explain yourself. Yeah. <laughs> but it's for the kids. Boo. Get out of here. <laughs> the kids love it. You don't even stand kids by this. Kids love it these days. Kids love kids. Kids are all about... Pigs these yeah. days. They're, they're like probably the hottest animal yeah. in the whole barnyard. That's where I saw Kids this Kids are guy. real into it. <laughs> I think if we are concerned about uproar with Scoob, I think the concern should be for the uproar yeah, if even. Uncle Iroh doesn't move to the second round. Uncle Iroh moves on to yeah. the second round. Not much argument there. Uh, I do have to say, Doge, thank you so much for your bracket. Mm -hmm. I was giggly. <laughs> on all Doge, basically every winner that he picked, he just did in a silly accent, like typed it phonetically really strange. And that was a good time. That was a really good time. Our next matchup, number four, Fred Flintstone against number 13, the Powerpuff Girls. Doge had Fred. Jordan had Powerpuff Girls. Jordan, you went first technically last but time. But I didn't, you know. But not really. Tell me about the Powerpuff Girls. Why them? I think the Powerpuff Girls are weirdly important because I can't think of beyond like Sailor Moon, 
I can't think of many cartoons from my childhood that were about a group of girls that like fought and did like cool power stuff. Um, it's more common now, I think, but, but growing up, there weren't a ton of like squads yeah. of girls that were fighting crime as superheroes. And I just think that's cool. Um, and, uh, the Flintstones are iconic for sure, but haven't moved any needles in quite a while, nor has Powerpuff Girls. But I think that from our childhood, Powerpuff Girls have a more lasting impact on our generation. I think Flintstones impact. Uh, so before the Flintstones cartoons were just kind of Bugs Bunny type of vibe, where it was just like, let me run around and smash things to classical music. And the Flintstones really pioneered the animated sitcom. I mean, the Flintstones is basically the honeymooners mm-hmm. at, with cavemen. Uh, but the Flintstones pioneered and were the very first and far away, far and away the most successful for the time animated sitcom. Uh, and so without the Flintstones, I don't think we'd have were the Simpsons. I don't think we'd have. Were Flintstones pre-Jetsons? Yes. They were? Yeah, by a couple well, yeah, of years. I mean, it's, they were like okay. primitive. No, I get it. Um, and the Jets- oh, yeah. Jetsons it. is future. Jetsons is future. Okay. It's not, it hasn't yeah. happened yet. Yeah. made this yeah. list, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just think Flintstones are, are super uh, foundational to the modern cartoon landscape because we wouldn't have The Simpsons. We wouldn't have uh, Bob's Burgers. We wouldn't have King of the Hill. Those things that are on our list that we're like, man, those have to make it to the next round. I don't think any of them exist without the Flintstones. Oh, no. And the world is super creative. I think it's really a fun way to build out a caveman world. That it's like the the exact modern world. I agree. But everything is I'm dinos. comfortable any direction this vote leans. There's no Mojo Jojo, though. There is no Mojo Jojo. Jojo. But there's John Goodman. Sugar, okay, see, if spice. you're going to bring up the John he's Goodman not, one, he's then not. all you of a sudden my vote is hard Powerpuff Girls. Get the Flintstones out of here. That movie <laughs> sucks. Yeah, can't do that. Cannot do that. I'm going to say, hmm, right. <sighs> I already know who you're going to say because I already know who I voted for. So I know who you're going to say. In an audience vote, whoever moves through is losing to Uncle Iroh anyway. So yeah, Fred Flintstone moves on. Shouldn't we have put Peppa Pig through though to make it a real challenge? (laughs) (laughs) She's too powerful. She's too powerful. Finally. She would have swept. It's good that we cut her off at the knees right Uh, now. Swept a pig. Swept a pig. This is another match. Oh my goodness. This is another matchup that would have really been worth seeing. (laughs) Sweep a pig. Sweep a pig. Number three, Stewie Griffin against number 14, Courage, the Cowardly Dog. Jordan, you had Courage. Yes, I tend to. It's gone now. You had it. Doge had Stewie. Who who wants to go first here for this final matchup? You pick. Doge. I chose Stewart because although I don't care for it, and I think it is probably well past its sell-by date. The family guy has bouts, periodic bouts, of really strong writing and really, really unique and fun ideas. Uh, and I think in in isolation, Stuart, the baby of it, can be funny and fun. Uh, it brings me no joy to vote Stewie Griffin through to the next round just because I don't <laughs> really care for Stewie Griffin or in many of the Griffins at all. Oh, that's it. Jordan? Um, <clears throat> I think Courage is weirdly important because Courage, I think, exposed a lot of young kids to horror as a fun concept versus something to be overly terrified of. I think Courage, like as a show was super unique. Um, Like the way that the show is presented and sort of the mixed animation styles to make certain things more unsettling and the sort of creepiness of it is really, really creative and really fun. And to tell it all through this lens, I mean, we've all, I assume, read the like internet theories of none of this is actually scary. It's just from a dog's perspective of how the world is terrifying. You know, somebody somebody with an electric set of clippers would be terrifying to a dog because it's loud. So that's why the guy that comes to groom is so scary and, you know, all those different things. And I I get that. I think that's great. But man, what a unique way to present horror to kids that isn't necessarily crossing line. You know, it might freak you out. It's it's for sure scary enough to give you a nightmare or two, but it's not... It's not life-alteringly scary like some things can be <laughs> right. when you're a kid. And I think it's really 
interesting that Cartoon Network was promoting. And Courage sort of, I think, tilted the scales towards Cartoon Network doing some really weird, unique stuff that was a little unsettling, like over the garden wall and stuff like that later on down the road. But mostly my vote here is because I think Family Guy sucks. It's like (laughs) Family Guy has a four-year window of opportunity. And that is when you are in college with a bunch of dudes and there's nothing else to watch and you throw it on to laugh because you don't have to think at it. But um, overall, I just think that Family Guy is dwarfed by almost every other... I mean, Family Guy is not even the best Seth MacFarlane cartoon and none of those are my favorite by any means. Like, there's just Mm -hmm. not... I don't think Stewie deserves to be here, but that's just, you know I had to represent TBS. Yeah, and, I get and it. Fox somehow. Yeah, um, I, I'm going to say Courage, and uh, horror is such a big deal to me too. And Courage would show up on some lists when it was showing up. It was like Empire, whenever Empire would do like a list of the top 50 or something like that. And so Courage barely would show up, but um, I think it's a strong argument. So Courage moves on. Let's read about this 32 that we're going to be tackling next week together. We'll have Bugs Bunny, the number one seed, against number nine, Luis Belcher. We'll have number five, Daffy Duck, against number 13, Lion-O. Mm. We'll have Ooh. number six, Zuko, against number 14, Inspector Gadget. We'll have number 10, The Chipmunks, against number two, Charlie Brown. That one's tough. We'll have, that is oh, tough. No. We'll have number one, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Turtles in a half shell, eight, baby. Garfield. Who likes to eat turtles in a half shell? Mm. Then we'll have number five, Tina Belcher, against number 13, Archer. Number 11, Animaniacs, against number three, Bobby Hill. Number seven, The Iron Giant, against number two, Scooby-Doo. Mm. Oh, no. Number one, SpongeBob, against number eight, Bluey. Number 12, Chucky Finster, against number four, Eric Cartman. Number 11, oh my goodness, this one's tough. Number 11, Miss Frizzle, against number three, Snoopy. Number 10, Pink Panther, against number two, Homer Simpson. Number 16, Samurai Jack. Against number nine, Yogi Bear. Number five, Uncle Iroh. Against number four, Fred Flintstone. That's number a eleven, Dexter. Number eleven, Dexter. Against number fourteen, Courage. That's a matchup. And then it's a Royal Rumble here. We've got number ten, Mordecai and Rigby tag team pair up against number two, Tom and Jerry. Ooh, I love that. Oh, <laughs> so that'll be a fun second round to end today's episode. I'd love to have your name. And tell me, if you were to select one person from VeggieTales to be in this bracket that you feel like could go the furthest, who would it be? Mm -hmm. I'm Carter. I mean, it's right here. I'm just going to do Larry the Cucumber. Mm. Which of his variants? The the baseline Larry? Or are you going like a Larry Boy variant? Oh, shoot. Baseline Larry. Okay. I'm Doge. I know. That song rips. I'm Doge. Uh, Robert the Tomato, because he doesn't ever learn anything. He actually already knows everything. So he already knows every weakness of each of these. And he, in a fight to the death, this tomato will squish him. Man, I think, I think it's Junior Asparagus for me. I'm Jordan. And Mm -hmm. I think it's Junior Asparagus. (laughs) I'm Junior Asparagus. And I think it's Jordan. I think Jordan. (laughs) presents adjusting to the suburbs it never dawned on me how much walking i used to do until i bought a house in the suburbs like when i'd say i'm going for coffee of course i was walking but now it's like three miles and no latte is worth that i find myself inviting people on walks with me like it's a scheduled activity this morning my neighbor asked me what i'm doing and i actually said i'm going for a walk with nancy anyway when you save with progressive by bundling your home and auto that's the easy part of adjusting to the suburbs progressive casualty insurance company coverage provided in service by affiliates and third-party insurers
At Kroger, we want our fresh produce to meet your expectations, which is why we're dedicated to doing up to a 27-point inspection on our fruits and veggies, checking for things like scarring. In fact, only the best produce, like zesty oranges and crisp carrots, reach our shelves. Because when it comes to fresh, our higher standards mean fresher produce. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Save big on your favorites with the buy five or more, save a dollar each sale. Simply buy five or more participating items and save a dollar each with your card. Kroger, fresh for everyone.